Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome to today's episode of DV Live City Talk. I am Amanda Akam, the Marketing Coordinator at Desert Valley's Federal Credit Union. And before we dive in, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you like this episode, make sure to share it with your friends and get the word out there. Today, I am excited to have John Watkins on. Welcome. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I know. This is a first time episode for you. <laughs> yes, first time. Eric asked me to join. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll come over and do this. <laughs> Our kooky little show, huh? Uh, I've actually watched a few. They're not that kooky. Only, <laughs> only Eric. Oh, yeah. Well, there's, <laughs> there's not much we can do about that anymore. <laughs> We've tried. <laughs> so before we jump in, can you please tell us who you are, what you do, and a fun fact about yourself? Uh, my name is John Watkins. I'm the owner of uh, the Daily Independent and other papers throughout Kern County, from Taft to uh, Mojave area. Is that collectively the Mountain Desert Publications? Mountain and Desert Publications, okay. and then also Scenic 395 Magazine. Okay. And I guess uh, the quirky fact would be I retired on December 18th, and six <laughs> months later I owned the Daily Independent and Taft to go with my other collection. <laughs> That was that was a fun retirement, right? Did yeah, you get, really? get well, some golfing in. The wife, no, actually, you know, I got a little back problem, but anyway, the wife said I had to do something because if I trimmed the roses one more time, we wouldn't have any. <laughs> <laughs> so she wanted you out of the house. <laughs> yeah, basically. Perfect. Good to know. <laughs> so I'm excited to discuss today uh, the 2022 election results for not only Ridgecrest but Kern County. Um, one thing I do want a disclaimer for those watching, at the time of this recording, we are pre-recording. It is still unofficial results. It is um, November 30th, and we're still waiting, hopefully for today, for finals. Yeah, I think the final uh, posting will come about 4 o'clock today. Mm -hmm. uh, all they got left is provisional and mail-in ballots, so, so and we'll see what happens with that. Yeah, so let's go ahead and just dive right on in, yeah? Yeah. Perfect. So as a longtime resident and covering all the different publications that are in your collection, <laughs> how do you feel that the with the history and the trends that this election will have? This election didn't surprise me on two fronts locally. I pretty much went by the book. The only question was uh, the Ellis race and, and uh, the other person's race as far as running against Chris, finishing he, right now he's ahead. As far as uh, council members? Yeah. So mm -hmm. we did have yeah. um, Doc Heyman. Right. Easy winner, projected. We, we endorsed him. Uh, Skip Gorman. Yep. Uh, I thought he might have be the third one. Uh, um, Chris Ellis as well as Scott Miller. Right, right. And I thought uh, the election didn't surprise me along those lines. You know, Skip's well-known. He's the right for us, too. Mm -hmm. uh Measure P was no surprise. I almost hit it. I said 55% before the, the ballot started, and it came in at, right now, so I think it's 55.8. Yeah. Uh, so that didn't surprise me at all. Uh, locally, that's mm -hmm. the two. And then Christina Scribner, of course, running for uh, the college district. Yes. That one surprised me. It was closer than I thought it was going to be. That one was very close. What was it? Uh, Fifty-six forty-four. Yeah. It was, and, but it was early on— uh, uh, Christina was behind. Mm -hmm. uh, she did well outside of the area. Yes. Uh, so I think... Uh, and I believe um, Jennifer did well up in the more northern. Right, northern. That's what, that's who I met, did well outside the area. Yeah. Uh, but came down to the core. Christina was better known, I think, outside of Ridgecrest mm -hmm. and, and uh, did better in the other areas. Okay. And then as well as we... Briefly discuss Measure P. So Measure P is it was a slam dunk. I mean, I said fifty five, and it's going to come in a little bit higher than fifty five. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's just time for the council to project to the community exactly how they're going to spend the money. Yes. So going into that, as well as this election, was uh, Eric Bruin got reelected. Right. That didn't surprise me. I we endorse Eric. It is a massive. Um, Separation. So, oh, it was, it was, everybody thought it was going to be close. I never thought it was going to be close. And he's been doing a lot of work with the Measure P. Uh, I believe it was last week, possibly the week before, we saw him discussing Penny Pool. Right. So, and that was part of the Measure P. And, and I, and I agree this, the pool has to be built somewhere else other than with the current location. Okay. Uh, I know at the EDC at one time we were considering it, but there was some property 
next to Leroy Jackson Park. And maybe that's where it's going to go. I don't know. Uh, I'd like to know where it's going to go. Yeah. Uh, I think it's important. And I think that would be a good spot, especially with the different sports complex happening there. It makes sense. And obviously with the high school there and the swim team coming off there. Everything's right there. Everything could be in one central recreation area. Mm -hmm. And that's what it should be. Yeah. And going off that, it's right next to fire department that we would continue to have. Right. And continue having two locally. Right. I, I never doubted it was going to pass. I mean, how they spend the money is, is going to be key to how, whether Major V is renewed. And they're just, you know, they're going to be transparent with the Major P money. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to see just a, a regular budget. I don't need all the, <laughs> all the city uh, finance stuff. I just want to know how much money you took in, how you spent it. And I want to know how much money you project to take in and how you're going to spend it. And I want to match it up on a monthly basis. So you want the meat and potatoes, not the frilly uh, extra stuff. Right. I want the meat and potatoes. Now it's time. <laughs> you know, we've already done the dessert. Now we got to get to the meat and potatoes. I mean, I always love dessert, especially mm-hmm. for breakfast. Well, dessert to me was just the approval. Now I want to know the meat and potatoes. Mm-hmm. So let's continue on with measures. How do you feel looking towards Measure J as well as Measure K? Okay, Measure J was... Uh, didn't surprise me. It, it's the term uh, limits. Uh, term limits one, mm-hmm. and that didn't surprise me at all. I uh, even though I was against it, I thought we already had term limits. You got a ballot. Uh, it didn't help anything at all when we did term limits in Sacramento. It kind of feels um, a few people, majority of people, seemed a little bit confused with it as well. I, I think so, but it was never going to. It was a big push in Beckersfield. Mm-hmm. That's where the push came for the approval. And you saw what happened. It's almost two to one. Yeah. Uh, I don't, you know, I'm not saying I'm a favorite. It's past now, so we got to live with it. Right. So there's <laughs> nothing to do about that. I just, the proof is in the pudding, and I don't think it's going to improve anything. We can hope. Money decides politics, and whether you're Republican or Democrat, it's not going to change anything. <laughs> That's right. Very true. And then Measure K is the unincorporated tax. That's the one that's going to be interesting. It's barely 1% ahead right now with the ballot still to be counted. Uh, it has a bigger play outside our area, mm-hmm. like Boron, Mojave, Roseman, that area, Cantil, uh, in your current here, Ransburg area. That's the key area here. But right. you, you get over to Bakersfield on the west side, there's, there's a lot of, lot of play there. But not so much locally, and then right. Well, you, I, I mean, I'm gonna we're gonna get into how the people voted locally, mm-hmm. but until we get to that final ballot count, we can't get to the precincts. I want to know how the people in Inukern voted on it. I want to know how the people in Boron voted, how the people in Ransburg area vote, Mojave, Roseman. That we're going to benefit from what Donnie said. He's going to put deputies over here, right? Uh, I'll talk about opening jail. And I'm not so in favor. I'm in opening a jail here uh, in probably an unpopular position. But we've lived without it for all this time. And we just need to be able to maintain. I think to open the jail again is a, is a wish, but not a, not a need. Well, and I think that's a concern that was raised on a couple previous episodes that I had where – it takes away from our local law enforcement the time just to drive over without the local jail. Right. But how much time does that really take away? If we've got Measure P passed, mm-hmm. we're going to have extra money. I mean, I think if we hire enough officers, it solves that issue. And retain. Uh, retain them. Mm-hmm. Got to retain them. Uh, I know Donnie has offered uh, to put deputies over here with a stipend of $5,000, sign on, stuff like that. and. Extra money to live outside, and or relocation wise, or right, and it hasn't happened. I mean, he can't get people to come here, can't get people to go to the desert, mm-hmm. can't even get people to come over to Beckersfield. And We're he, nice over here, I promise. He, he went down to LA and pitched it in person to the people that were looking to come over, mm-hmm. and so it doesn't happen. So it's not just the money; I think it's the amenities, okay, the quality of life, the pool. Different things like that. Improved parks. And speaking on that, though, 
over the course of your time here as a resident, how do you feel that our amenities have grown, though? They've grown. I've, I came here in 1975. I remember the old Kerr McGee field was, you know, it was <laughs> fine. Uh, I've seen it grow and mm-hmm. get better, and I've seen it deteriorate. And now I see it coming back. Okay. And I think it has to come back to enhance our community. It has to come back. The amenities have to come back and improve to be able to uh, help the base draw employees. Yes. We're at the, you know, there's a younger crowd coming to work on the base. Mm-hmm. We need to give them something to do. And that means a pool or a park or, or whatever. Otherwise, they leave on Flex Friday and don't come back till Monday. And not even just the younger crowd. I mean, even the family-oriented crowd. We need something for the younger kids to right. go out. And that's even on this side of the gate for our community members. Right. And I, and I think the Major P combined with what the school district's doing mm-hmm. is going to be a great selling point for anything we have to offer in Ridgecrest. And hopefully that'll help. Yes. Boost the economy yes. in turn with Measure P. Right. So with right. the additional local. Now, the, the one thing that's, that people don't realize that happened that had no effect on the election at all is the bill signed by Governor Newsom that takes the redistricting out of the hands of the supervisors into a put into a commission. Well, especially with, all the work that Dave did earlier this year in redistricting, well, end of last year and earlier right. this year. And what that what that did when Newsom signed that bill was put it in the hands of say I think he said sixteen people, with the registration giving the plurality to the Democrats, mm-hmm. and then you have the Republican independents, et cetera. But but the Democrats will control the, as I read the bill, will control the redistricting, and whenever it starts, I don't know. I know it's, it won't start. I don't think it'll be a wait until 10 years. I think you'll see a lawsuit come down the road shortly on the uh, redistricting in Kern County. Mm-hmm. And we'll see what happens on that. Last time that lawsuit, the judge ordered an election to be held. I want to say, actually, it's been almost a full year since I did have, since Dave was on the sh- show talking about the redistricting and right. everything. And I know, was it last month? He was just awarded. Right. He just got the award. So he was award for that, Dave. Um, thank you again for all the hard work you did for everybody within Correct. the town. So with the redistricting, I think how did I can't exactly remember, forgive me, but that shuffles us all the way over to California City. Yeah, it'd be in eastern Kern County is I think what they're gonna propose when the next redistricting comes around. Mm-hmm. It'd be a Kern River Valley and the high desert. But I and think then it, we'll have. To, here's the thing: we got two supervisors right now. Right, and it broadens them so far. And you only got to get one more vote to get something done. Mm-hmm. You have one supervisor. <laughs> you have to get two more votes to get something done. Sometimes that's hard. Because we did have Supervisor um, Peters on mm-hmm. talking about with the redistricting how much broader that would be and not being able to get in touch so easily with right. your supervisors. So correct. I don't think. I think everybody likes having that access and that transparency. That is one thing, especially with our current council, that I think they've done a great job at being approachable, reachable. Very transparent. Mm-hmm. I think so. So, I mean, I can probably throw up Eric's cell phone number. <laughs> <laughs> and he would not be mad. <laughs> I think uh, the council's done a good job at that. Mm-hmm. I think uh, the people appreciate that. And, I mean, you've seen many councils come through and people change and the cohesiveness that this one's working with, how do you feel that that's going? I, I think that's, it's working better uh, than in the past. Uh, councils have been divided. Councils in, uh, in my Taft paper have been divided mm-hmm. over in Taft. They're definitely divided down in California City where I have the other paper, even <laughs> after the last, this last election. Uh, and I think there's a difference between respectfully being divided as well as coming together cohesively for the betterment of the city. Yes, I think so. And, and you see this council actually talking to each other and making decisions based on total uh, participation. Mm-hmm. And you also see them, I feel, taking more account into what people say, whether that be 
comments on social media, meeting them out in town, calling them up, email, stuff like that, accessibility to them? I, I think so. I think so. Okay. And it's just something new, something different than what we've seen a lot more in the past. Right. I agree. I will I agree. admit, I mean, I haven't been really big in the political game in a long time, like being aware, but now that I'm being older, family, <laughs> well, I, I, I take think, notice. I think it all grows with the growth of the town and the respect that the people have. Mm -hmm. That's and the bottom line. Like you said, people leaving on Flex Friday, going out of town, and then come back on Monday— what you invest in your community, you'll get back out. I, I, uh, I've i said it. I've been on record. It's not going to change it. <laughs> Flex Friday is the worst thing ever happened to the city of Ridgecrest. Probably the best thing that happened for the base, mm -hmm. but worst thing to happen for the business community of Ridgecrest. It's definitely different. And one thing that we I was discussing in a personal conversation yesterday is the proposition of a four-day work week in California. That's on the table. Yeah. That's on the table. So I could really only imagine what that would do to communities like Ridgecrest, even bigger ones, with people leaving and then coming back. I think it would, they would find the same effect. Well, maybe not so much because we're, we're an outlier. We're way away from everybody, basically. I, I tell people about Ridgecrest, two and a half hours, you can be anywhere you want to be, mm -hmm. except for all the way to San Diego. Uh, <laughs> But in L.A., two and a half hours is, you know. San Diego. Ten miles because of the <laughs> or, traffic. Yeah, <laughs> very true. Okay, you are correct. <laughs> but you, you, you see what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. We are a commuter town, like it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes back to when the, a lot of the people lived in the Kern River Valley in the 70s and 80s and worked on the base. And the base actually had a shuttle back and forth, a couple of shuttles taking people back and forth. Really? Yeah. Hmm. So, and I remember that a lot growing up um, here. My dad, you know, worked on base, mm -hmm. but we would go on weekends like up to the mountain, go right. snowboard. My first job was a snowboard instructor because he was ski patrol. But I don't really recall, you know, how often we would stay in town because in summer we would go down south. Right. But I do always recall there's, you know, the old saying, "There's nothing to do here." Well. I disagree. You can find something to do if you want to find something to do here. We yes. have we have Cloda that does the plays. We have the little leagues. We have all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And I think if you want to find something to do, you can do it. But Dirt biking want, became a big thing. I, yeah, I just don't buy into that nothing to do thing. And I, I it goes into um, is a funny thing. This morning I was talking to Gary Charlon about Ridge Project and how. Right. Right now, it's kind of stagnant due to lack of volunteerism, which a lot of opportunities in town are hurting from, and just not really people want to see a cleaner, better, more beautiful community, but as long as you're doing it, not me. Yeah, and I, it's funny. You met, I talked to Gary this morning. He said you were going to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> so, I did. Well, okay, so full disclosure, we're in the process of purchasing a home, and I needed to go get insurance, and oh. I was like, I need to track down Gary. I try and check in with everybody, you know, when I get in town as many people as I can, and uh, I actually talked to him. He called me on the way. He said, you coming over? I said, yeah. And I said, you got that information I need? And he said, yeah, come on by. <laughs> so did you realize one of the things he told me today was 87% fewer homes being built this year than last year? No. Yeah, that's what he told me this morning. He's got the 87% fewer homes being built than last year. He's he's got the uh 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 information hmm. from a company and I'm going to go by and pick it up today. There's I, some other stuff. That's so, actually really interesting. Tell him I'm going to have him on the show to talk about that. He already said that. <laughs> <laughs> he told me you were going to have him on the show. <laughs> yes. So, yes, we were. But now that gives me a totally different topic. So, but that's interesting. I wonder if that's a residual effect of the pandemic, the rise in costs of material. No, I don't know inflation. about that. But that's over a long period of time. I don't know. But, but let me tell you what I think is going to happen. And talking to some economists, my bankers, my bankers, I got to talk to Eric too. Uh, people are spending money right now, mm -hmm. Christmas. Mm -hmm. They're using their credit cards. Interest rates are going to go up. 
Oh, yeah, they're not stopping. They're already, a lot of them are already behind. Now they're just making partial payments on this and that. Well, uh, interest rates have almost doubled versus this right. time last year. So I think, and Gary told me I th- it's going to happen, but not as quick as, I th- as I'm pro- projecting. I think in the first quarter, you're going to see record bankruptcies and foreclosures. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. with, with people not being able to pay their bills. And I'm sure repossessions are turn right. in. right. You know, right. surrendered vehicles, right. things. Gary says it won't happen in the first quarter. I said, by the, I said, I think early on in the first quarter, you'll see trend. By the end of the third quarter, you're going to see more trend. He said, well, later in the year, you're going to see it happen. Uh, that's his forecast. Okay. Uh, I just think in talking with uh, a couple of my bankers and stuff that the first quarter is going to be very crucial to the economy of the United States of America. And with that comes local economy for us as well. Yes. Locally in our small cities. And that's kind of what's different about Ridgecrest. We're in this weird little bubble. But I feel like more residents are feeling this hit. Well, you would know. You're here to credit you, so I'm not asking for information. But I'm just saying. So, I'm sure, well, well, I'm, well, fun I'm, fact, <laughs> I do not do anything financials, Oh, I know that. Money. You're just a PR lady. I'm just uh, the marketing one that knows fun stuff. Right. Like hex colors. But I'm just saying <laughs> that I think... Every financial institution is going to take a long look at their balance book at the end of the first quarter. Mm -hmm. If they Uh, aren't doing it already. Right, if they're not doing it already. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, I understand that uh, Chase bought Union Bank. And I don't know whether Union is converting or closing. Do you know anything about that? I do not. I understand Chase bought Union Bank. I, I knew there was discussions of the acquisition. Uh-huh. That's why I understand it happened anyway. Huh. I don't know if they'll keep the name or just merge it into a chase. That's what I was wondering, yeah. Hmm. If anyone knows, drop a comment below or let us know who to yeah, talk let to. Let us know, yeah. Let us know. <laughs> so, but I mean, it's happening. We also saw that Alta One bought Mission Bank here locally. Yes. Uh, yes. Their book of business. And they just uh, opened another branch up in uh, Tatchby, too. Mm-hmm. So, so it's happening. Places are finding their way out, what's best. And I think it's happening a lot faster and on the rise than anyone could have predicted. Dramatically quicker than anybody could, could predict. And it does not seem to be slowing down or plateauing. I think it's still going to go upward trend. Mm-hmm. But it's got to stop. You know, There's going to be the end of the mergers and stuff pretty soon. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot to keep up with. Yes, yes. Um, even, yes, on the financial institution side, just seeing rates changing, like sometimes weekly or daily. It's like, how is this happening so fast? It's almost daily. Mm-hmm. It's almost daily. A lot of people are looking at us, like my husband and I, like, you guys are crazy buying a house right now. And I was like, well, the rates aren't going down. I think it's the best investment you got going right now. <laughs> but they're like, it's holiday season, the cost. And I was like, nothing's going down. No, no. <laughs> it's not going to go down anymore. My husband's just happy he doesn't have to put up all my Christmas stuff in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I want so, my tree. Uh, you want your tree up, yeah? That's what we're going to do this weekend. We did see, um, I was on the way in today, I saw that the local Christmas tree lot that usually comes from Oregon is back down in Ridgecrest. Yep. So over by the High Desert Sports Center in Toyota. Yeah, that's what I heard, yeah. So they haven't been here since, I think, 2019. Um, I believe it's the Clark family. So I'm excited to go over there and get a wreath. They're sprouting up in Bakersfield right now, not as many as they used to, but they got, they're they're there. Oh, Okay. People are buying Christmas trees. It's, it's time to be happy. It's time to... People want to spend money this year. Well, I mean, you saw I have three trees in our lobby here at Desert right, Valley's today. I saw that. <laughs> so, on top of every department got their own tree. Right. <laughs> if I don't have one in my house, we all going to have them somewhere. <laughs> I got you. But no, I think I agree. It's time to be happy, you know, turn on the positivity. Everything's going to loom, but it's how you invest your time and your effort into it. I think everybody makes what they make of themselves too. Mm -hmm. So, Uh, so, well, thank you so much for being on today. Okay. I've enjoyed this. I'll have to bring you, maybe I'll have you and Gary back on. 
oh, together. Oh, well, we'd we'll be in trouble there. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'd be in trouble if I also brought Eric in. <laughs> Eric, uh, we need to keep, keep Eric out. I know. <laughs> uh, actually, no, Eric would be a good, good third party there. So, uh, I think uh, I'm going to leave you with this. I think Ridgecrest is going to grow, mm-hmm. contrary to what people are saying. I think we'll lose some businesses, but new businesses will come in. Now, I will ask, do you believe it's going to grow through the base, the community, or both? Both. Both. Okay. I think our school system yields results for young families with kids. Mm-hmm. I think the base is going Especially to Especially with the new build for right. Richmond. Right. And I think the base is going to continue to enhance their, their programs. Just my gut feeling. Mm-hmm. And I don't think we've heard the last of the F-35 coming to Ridgecrest. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Every time I talk to Congressman McCarthy, he says the jets are coming. Yes. That is the one. Well, that's one of the perks of being here. So it's always a good time. And speaking of Kevin McCarthy, if you become Speaker of the House, which it looks like it will be, mm-hmm. Ridgecrest will benefit. We yes. all have to understand that. Yes. He we is. need to endorse him, be behind him, wish him well, and keep pushing him to help Ridgecrest. And the whole entire high desert area. Yes. Including the Edwards Air Force Base. He just did a big project down there. So I think this little area has been good about becoming a squeaky wheel for not only him, but Vince as well. Vince um, is a great guy. Supervisor yeah. Peters as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I... Uh, I really like Vince is a friend of mine. Kevin's a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. Vince does a great job in Sacramento. People don't realize how well he does. He gets things done in a quiet, efficient way. Yeah, he's a little stealthy little shark. <laughs> That's yeah. what I feel like. Like out of nowhere, he just comes. He, and, he, and he does a great job. And we all got to remember that. We are blessed with representation that is really, really good. And I think it's something to say that they come in here, like for Parade of a Thousand Flags, we had them as well as Shannon. Right. That come down to the little town that feels like we're, you know, we're at the kids' table while everyone's at the big table in Bakersfield. Kevin will always tell you, in his first race for Congress, Ridgecrest put him over the top. Ridgecrest won the race. Really? tell you that, yes. Interesting. Interesting little fact to know. And he never forgot that. That's good. I think that keeps him humble and keeps us in his little little forefront. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you again, John, for being here today. I appreciate it. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, absolutely. And everyone, have a great evening, and be sure to head on over to City of Ridgecrest's YouTube page now so you can watch tonight's council meeting. Thanks, everyone. Bye.